Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This is the third video of my Coraline research. You can go to the description below if you want to watch the other two videos. One is about the differences between the book and the film and the other explores the facts behind the book and the film. But in this video I will be discussing all of the hidden easter eggs in the Coraline film specifically, not the book. In my last video, in the behind the scenes bit, I had to mention a few hidden easter eggs so I could explain the story behind it. Such as the mover's van and the message in the other father's song. But here are more. Graffiti on the back of the mover's truck. So we know that the movers were a nod to the Ramph brothers, but there is also graffiti on the back of the truck saying stop mo rules which is short for stop motion rules, giving another nice nod to everyone who helped in the film. Coraline was Laker's first full length film in stop motion animation, so it was a huge task to undertake at the time. Obviously since then they've done many more and are very well known for stop motion pictures now. The dollar bill given to the movers had Henry Selleck's face on it. Quite an amusing way of putting your mark on your work. This is before we even see Coraline herself in the movie, which I find funny too. The cracked headlight on the family car. This is why Coraline's mum has a neck brace on in the film. They also have a conversation about it in the kitchen, with Coraline insisting it wasn't her fault, which means it probably was. But then we had the accident. It wasn't my fault you hit that truck. I never said it was. The snow globe. The snow globe in the film is from Detroit Zoo. The Horace H. Rackham Memorial Fountain is located in the very centre of the Detroit Zoo. You can see in the snow globe the attention to detail in capturing the real life zoo fountain. Coraline's mum blames her for breaking the snow globe after she saves them from the other mother. What a great thank you. Just joking, they don't know what happened. Silly parents, they're just so out of touch with the other world. Coraline's hair. In the film, Coraline's hair is blue. However, we see a family portrait and in that picture, she has black hair like described in the book. Perhaps Coraline's hair isn't naturally blue for children's animation whimsy, but her parents actually let her dye it. Maybe this is because they had to move and this was them trying to make her happy. That would be pretty cool. Coraline's hat. She has a military style hat. Apparently it is actually a replica of a Japanese school boy hat. Selick said he had recently bought one for his son who never wore it. So Selick wanted a hat to be made for Coraline. With her quirky style, she was more likely to wear it after all. Coraline's dad has a ketchup stain. In a scene where Coraline's dad is putting her to bed and messing around, you might spot that he has a ketchup stain on his top. Maybe you remember the scene in Coraline when her mum asks her, how do you feel about a mustard ketchup salsa wrap for lunch? Which Coraline makes a rather disgusted face at. Well, between that moment and when her dad is with her in the bedroom, there was apparently a deleted scene in which he got that ketchup stain. Since knowing that, I really want to see it. The bug wallpaper in the other world. Everything in the other world is supposed to be the exact opposite of reality. Where the real world is grey and boring, the other world is colourful and exciting. The living room in the real world has a greyish blue colour to it and a faded pattern on it. This pattern happens to be insects, a foreshadowing of what is to come. The other mother is never seen eating the delicious food cooked in the other world, but we do see her eat a bug when she's in her true form. The flag hanging outside of the pink palace. Mr Bobo. You know what, I've been calling him that all the time, but this is about the film, so I should probably call him Mr Babinski. Anyway. He has a flag hanging outside his apartment, which appears to be the flag of Montenegro. That's a small country near Croatia and Serbia. Mr. Babinski is Russian, however he makes sure to keep the flag hanging proudly outside of his home. This could mean many things which I'm not going to get into. The only difference is that the real Montenegro flag has a lion in the middle, whereas Mr. Babinski's flag has a horseman. 
Mr. Babinski's Medal. Mr. Babinski is Russian, which most people can tell by his accent. But what you might not know is that the medal he wears on his shirt is also a factor. Even while wearing a dirty top, Mr. Babinski still has his medal all shiny and pinned to his chest. This medal isn't just any medal though. It's not an athletic medal like you may think because of all that fitness stuff he does. It's a medal given to the nuclear cleanup team after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster on April the 26th, 1986. Mr. Babinski's medal even says participant in the cleanup campaign and has the image of a drop of blood on it. The blood drop has three lines, with each line representing a certain type of radiation. It is the only medal that was given out to participants of a nuclear cleanup. The producers have said that Mr. Babinski is blue due to being outside in the cold all the time. However, maybe it could also be because of being exposed to radiation for such a long time during the cleanup. Of course, I don't believe this happens in reality, just in the animation, as everything is more accentuated than in real life, and this could be a good way of showing that. It could also explain his love of eating raw beets. The Lightning Coraline's mum hates dirt and would never let her go and play in the rain. However, the Beldam wants Coraline to stay, and she knows she likes adventure. She suggests Coraline goes in the garden to play in the rain, but it isn't raining. When Coraline points this out, a lightning strike comes out of nowhere. The other mother started the storm for her and the lightning strike seems to look like her creepy needle-like hands. This is also the case with the trees in the other world. They also resemble the Beldum's hands. The Framed Silhouettes Another example of foreshadowing happens with the framed pictures on the back wall in the other world. They show the silhouettes of the ghost children trapped in that world. It hints at what is to come because at that point in the film, we don't know anything about the other children or that Coraline would be trying to save their souls. Does anyone else find it creepy that the Beldum displays their pictures in the dining room where she probably ended up eating them? The attention to detail in this film is amazing though. The soundtrack of Coraline No. I don't mean that there was supposed to be music played by They Might Be Giants, I mean the music written by French composer Bruno Kallis. Kallis? Kallis? Okay, I can't say his last name. Anyway, because he is French, you assume the song you hear is in French, and that's why you can't understand it. But no, French people can't understand it either, because it is in fact complete gibberish. Beldam's Humming The Beldam happens to be humming the same gibberish song from the Coraline soundtrack. Mom? What are you doing here in the middle of the night? You're just in time for supper, dear. You might think this was a little detail relating to what a lot of mothers may do while cooking but Selick went the extra mile to make sure it wasn't just random humming. Cooking becomes a big part of the other world, probably because Coraline is always complaining about her food in the real world, and so the other mother makes sure that there is plenty of yummy food for Coraline in the other world. The Moon in the Other World The moon in the other world when Coraline is trying to find the missing souls is a giant clock. Apparently there was a lunar eclipse during the production of the film and that's where Selick got his inspiration to include this. The poster of Coraline also shows the moon as being a giant button in the other world, which I think is pretty cool too, and it makes sense in the other world. The key to the other world Now this isn't much of an easter egg, but it is an interesting detail. 
The key that opens the door to the other world has a button end to it, which makes sense considering what is in the other world. The film allows a good view of the key when Coraline gets a hold of it, and I think it is so cool. But it does beg the question, who had the key made like that? So, there are the hidden easter eggs that I found out about. Are there any that I missed? In the next part of my Coraline research, I'm going to be discussing what makes Coraline so scary. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, I do have a Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok focusing on my costumes, and you're more than welcome to follow them. The links are in the description below. Till next time, bye!